Hi, everybody. I want to give a brief uh, introduction or review for the art and practice of gesture drawing. Um, and uh, so I'll say a few words about that. Uh, gesture drawing is a practice of getting at, um, in the words of um, Kaiman Nicolaides, it is the uh, process of drawing not what something looks like or what it is, but what it's doing. And so uh, what that means is um, I'm drawing this uh, skull here, this uh, plaster skull replica. And you're like, well, what is, what is that doing? That's not doing much of anything but sitting around. Um, but it does have a, its own uh, structural flow um, and its own set of visual relationships. Not to mention, it's matter of fact that it's a human skull and it's got that sort of um, content si or significance to it. So it is doing a lot. I just have to use my imagination and eyes a little bit in order to listen to it. Gesture drawing is uh, a practice that is set usually uh, in contrast to structural drawing. Um, uh, structural drawing is more, uh, one could say, realistic. It's more attuned to perspective, proportion, rationality, that kind of a thing. Uh, gesture drawing is more in line with movement, flow, emotion, and energy. These two can be reconciled oftentimes by artists, but it's good to uh, separate them out in dis into distinct practices in order to develop them as lines of technical development. <clears throat> so that being said, um, with the drawing, um, in order to get flow and to get fluidity and motion and movement, you have to be physically relaxed. Um, it'd be like trying to surf if, you know, you're standing up straight and stiff. It's just not going to, it's not going to work. It's not going to happen. So, um, uh, additionally, this is kind of akin to automatic drawing or in a way, uh, in the fluidity and motion of it, the intuition of it, and also with uh, blind contour uh, and free-flowing contour in a way that it's free-flowing like that. So if you can imagine putting all of these things together along with uh, me or you as an artist, uh, keeping track of what you're looking at and letting your eye guide your hand, um, that's what it'll do. Uh, that's what it'll be. And so I'll demonstrate that a little bit here uh, for you. Um, and so hopefully I can keep all of this in the screen. And that's where I can see it a little better. All right, so with the, with the gesture, I'm gonna start my drawing in the center of the object that I'm drawing. I'm not gonna go directly to a contour or an edge. I'm gonna start uh, using this uh, woodless pencil and um, I'm gonna keep the uh, pencil moving. I'm letting it guide itself around, in this case, the ocular bones, and the eyes, and I am going to end up making marks that are not accurate, but they're not wrong either. I'm going to let those marks tell me where the next one needs to be so that it becomes more accurate than the one before, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, so that I am going to be making a drawing that is, in the end, quite accurate. But that drawing will also have quite a bit of energy to it. Um, I'm looking really closely back and forth between the drawing and my subject matter. So I'm doing a lot of visual inspection. This isn't something where I'm being visually lazy. My eyes are picking up cues and following those cues to my hands.
one of the great things that um, gesture work can help you to understand is volume and mass. So here I'm not just drawing the contour or edge of the skull, I'm letting these lines loop around to describe the mass and center of it. keep refining this and going back and looking at how parts fit with parts and how those parts relate to the whole thing together. So I'm going to develop this whole drawing all together. And in that way, this will keep everything in better proportion than it would be if I were to start just drawing the details of that really interesting eye and nose and then work my way out hoping for the best that everything is in uh, in proportion and once i do spend uh, time getting things together and getting things situated then i might come in with a different grip and begin to work on finding a more accurate, the most accurate, but energetic lines to describe this, this skull. And I'm losing it. It's hard for me to draw and talk at the same time right now, but some artists that are really fantastic gesturally are Honor Daumier, this part of a uh, uh, handout and, uh, that I've got, and um, Eugene Delacroix, many others. Raphael, any of the great masters are going to have fantastic gesture work. It's part of a quality training and drawing is to learn gestures. I'm gonna redo these teeth here and get exaggerate the size of them because that looks cool. And I'm an artist and so I can exaggerate if I want to as long as long as it looks cool a little more work here and then i'll be done i uh, want to reiterate the importance of this um, this is of course drawing from a still life and all still lives and so to speak, innate objects, uh, inanimate objects, they do have gestures. It just takes a little bit, like I say, of imagination. But this is incredibly important for um, artists who concern themselves with utilizing the human figure, uh, whether that is for purposes as a painter or purposes as an illustrator or an animator uh, gesture is going to teach you how to get energy movement and dynamics in your work and that gives you a pretty good idea i would um, lose myself in the nonverbal state of my brain um, and uh, if i kept going so i'm going to shut up now uh, that's long enough i think to give you the idea of what this is all about and i hope that it's uh informative and I hope that you have fun putting it into practice. See y'all later.